Welcome to the Omnibus Show, a program for people who are interested in everything, with deep conversations on a wide variety of subjects. And now your host, Dave Gibbs. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Omnibus Show, the program for people who are interested in everything, with deep conversations on a wide variety of subjects. Well, this week's guest is Andres Berzins. He's the Honorary Counsel for the Republic of Latvia to the State of Indiana. He is also the President of the Carmel and Yelgava Sister Cities Committee and the City of Carmel Sister Cities and Community Outreach Consultant. That's quite a few things. Andres, welcome. It's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure to be here and talk to you today in our, our public. Well, thank you very much. So tell me a little bit about your story first. Um, your uh, your your tie-in with Lat- you are uh, ethnically Latvian. That's correct. That's correct. But I'm a Hoosier. A Hoosier Latvian. There you Can't go. Can't beat those. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm the son of Latvian immigrants that came here in the late '50s. Uh, they settled here in Indiana. My mom and dad uh, had three kids. Uh, I'm the youngest of the three and grew up in Nora. Went to Nora Elementary, Northview, North Central. Graduated there graduated from IU, and all during that time I was involved in the Latvian community, going to the Latvian church, uh, Latvian school on Saturdays, Latvian folk dancing on Friday nights, as well as, uh, of course, Latvian church uh, that was active here, and the Latvian choir. So I grew up very engaged and involved in the Latvian community. Okay. I won't have you sing a song today, but <laughs> that's, uh, I, I love language, and it's always, it's good that you're um, continuing your your uh, your ethnic language. So um, please tell tell us about how you got involved. Now you've been in the community. Now how did that develop? Because um, toward um, Carmel's your involvement with Carmel, obviously that's in Indianapolis, and then um, the Sister City Committee started here in Carmel. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your story and how that? Because you have these three positions. But um, I think the first one, being the honorary counsel for the act, for the republic itself, can you tell us? Please start with that. Absolutely, I'd love to. Um, I was always involved in the Latvian community, as, as I mentioned, and I was the president of the Latvian Community Center in Indianapolis. We've had our own community center there since 1962 was established. Uh, the prior president uh, was president there for 40 years, and then shortly thereafter, I came on in 2004 and led the Latvian Community Center for the next 15 years. Uh We had a lot of great accomplishments. We had the opportunity to rebuild the Community Center, uh, update it. We built on a pavilion. We also uh, invited a lot of other nationalities to join us. We had, of course, from the other Baltic countries, the Estonians and Lithuanians that uh, were part of the community. We also reached out and Pretty soon we had the Swedish society was uh, part of the Latvian community and using our community center. Also the Polish society, the Czechs and Slovaks, and then uh, the Scottish society also came on. Mm -hmm. So during that entire uh, 15 years, I had, of course, a chance to meet a lot of the uh, Latvian ambassadors to the United States. Um, We had a visit from the Latvian ambassador to the United States at the time, a gentleman by the name of Andres Teichmanis. And I had a chance to spend some time with him uh, at my home. And at that point, uh, he was kind enough to invite me to consider being consul for Latvia in the state of Indiana. Mm -hmm. Uh, Basically, that role is uh, you act as the ambassador for Latvia to the state. Uh, So that's with the governor's office. That's uh, all the official events. Uh, also uh, looking for any business and cultural opportunities as well as uh, uh, business opportunities and things of that type. I also serve any Latvian citizens that are here that may need assistance, legal assistance, uh, issues perhaps with their passport or returning to Latvia. So that's kind of my role there. Uh, For that process, I did travel to Latvia and I spent a week there with the foreign ministry during which there was an evaluation of, obviously, my uh, experience uh, and my ability to serve in this context. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, 
I was very happy to learn after a week long period. Uh, like I said, I traveled to various ministries, foreign ministry, justice ministry, education, uh, and uh, they had approved it. At which time that would have gone to uh, the uh, U.S. State Department. Uh, that also had to complete a background investigation on me and uh, accept me as a representative for the Republic of, of Latvia in Indiana. Mm -hmm. It was a great honor to uh, be uh, appointed to that position. Yeah, that would be, especially that being with your background. That's wonderful. And then you became the uh, president of the, uh, the uh, sister city for here in Carmel, Yelkova, which is, is a very important city in, in Latvia. Um, please tell us about that, how that progressed. Absolutely. Um, you know, Yelgava is a very old city in Latvia. It's been there for uh, many uh, thousand years plus officially. I, it'll be serving, it'll be celebrating their 760 year anniversary. But the way that all came about was um, I had the opportunity when I was appointed consul. Uh, and in that January of 2020, I started my work and started reaching out to various uh, individuals and in government and so forth. Mm -hmm. And one of those individuals was Mayor Brainerd. Uh, unfortunately, as we were preparing for that, COVID hit. Mm. <laughs> and from a, mm -hmm. uh, from a diplomatic standpoint, it's very hard to, to engage people diplomatically during that period. So as the whole world slowed and closed down, so, so did my work. But uh, luckily for me, uh, when it came to 2021, I had a chance to meet with Mayor Brainerd. Uh, also had the privilege at that time of uh, having my inauguration ceremony at the State House uh, here in Indianapolis. Uh, the current Latvian ambassador to the United States, Mars Selga, traveled here and accepted an invitation from Mayor Brainerd. Very nice to spend a few days here, and uh, Mayor Brainerd was kind enough to show us all around uh, the city of Carmel, which I, I really think was, was a key to uh, establishing our, our sister cities. Mm -hmm. I know when we arrived at uh, uh, Mayor Brainerd's home uh, for dinner in the evening, he had a Latvian flag hanging by his door. Oh, nice. Uh, so, that's uh, a nice touch. It was a beautiful touch, and, and it was acknowledged as well. Uh, I think that's great. So that's how that started. Of course, we also had the inauguration ceremony uh, down at the State House. Uh, Modest Selga, the ambassador, myself, and, and other representatives met with Governor Holcomb, who welcomed us uh, at, at that time, along with uh, uh, Secretary Chambers, uh, and uh, we had a great discussion with them. Uh, mm -hmm. They really showed us Hoosier, the Hoosier hospitality we're known for. Uh, and uh, I was very honored to have Governor Holcomb open the inauguration ceremony, uh, followed by Ambassador Selga and myself, uh, to all the friends and everybody who had gathered there to support me. So it really set a great first meeting, first uh, opportunity for Indiana and Latvia to work together, and Carmel and Yelgava work together. Fascinating. That that's that's great. What's really good is that um, <clears throat> having been a, a farm village basically, and if we've grown now into a destination city, having this international touch where you have all these um, um, individuals coming on a diplomatic basis and being able to be a part of that city. Be a part of the city's history. I find that's um, interesting, and then also, <clears throat> excuse me, part of the sister cities and community outreach consultant. Please tell us a little bit about that. So you're a three in one. A three in one, I guess. Uh, that's uh, you know, if you're wearing multiple hats, I know many of us do. So, yeah, that's uh, true. And it's all been a joy and a passion of mine. Uh, so uh, I'm very excited. You're the right man for the job. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I hope so. Uh, yeah. I, I think that <laughs> that's been shown. And you know, one of the things we have found is, uh, as a sister city consultant, I'm going to jump back. Uh, another very important part of our relationship with Yelgava, and, and the reason it was Yelgava and Carmel. Of course, I'm from Carmel, and lived here since '87. Mm -hmm. My grandfather uh, was a police captain in Yelgava in the 1930s. Edgar Krasts uh, was his name. And uh, thus, we found it would be a great connection between Carmel and Yelga. But there were a lot of similarities, sure. similarities in 
the time that uh, the mayors had served. Uh, our mayor, of course, 26 years at that time. I think uh, uh, Yelgov's mayor, Anders Ravinch, 22 years. Mm -hmm. A big focus on education, a big focus on the arts, music, dance, uh, sports, athletics, uh, rejuvenating, rebuilding the city, or in this case, building a city. Uh, Yelgov was destroyed almost completely in World War II, mm -hmm. and 97% uh, of it was destroyed uh, oh by the Soviet Red mm -hmm. Army that came through, and um, uh, they had a lot of rebuilding to do, and uh, Mayor Ravinch has done an incredible job over the past 20 years uh, really rebuilding that city. Mm -hmm. So from that standpoint, uh, they had about 67,000 inhabitants. It just made for a great connection. Mm -hmm. And with that, we had a delegation uh, with Mayor Brainerd that traveled over there in May of 2023. Uh, um, Yelgava returned the favor and came with a delegation of 10 in September during our Carmel International Arts Festival. And that really solidified our relationship. And from that, we've had a lot of things grow into it. We've already had a chance to establish a police exchange program where mm -hmm. officers from Yelgava travel here <clears throat> for a couple of uh, weeks. Uh, officers from here travel to Yelgava to mm -hmm. do the same. Uh, we also uh, had artists come for the Carmel International Arts Festival. Very nice. And Carmel on <clears throat> Canvas, which was fantastic. And, and uh, so that's kind of how this whole thing came together. We're now... Uh, what the reason we established the position of community, you know, sister city and community outreach consultant was uh, so that we could have all of our sister cities, of which there are seven now, uh, really uh, formulate a coordinated effort mm -hmm. to engage the community uh, with all of our organizations, the great cultures, the great history, music, food, and everything else. So that's why we're, uh, you know, moving forward with this type of approach in sister cities in Carmel. That's great. The, this is good. And I think that <clears throat> um, particularly in this time of all these, there's a lot of crazy divisions, but I think having a stable community that does have this, you know, that's locally focused, but also has an international touch. And, uh, you know, having that the arts festival was just very fun. Everybody gets together, and, and it's just really a, a wonderful time. Now, <clears throat> talking about your tribe, which has is, is gone through in the, the Baltic states, which is historically quite a, a, there's a lot of history there, but there's a lot of, um, the way we talk about it today, there's a lot of trade through there. But there are a lot of states and empires and, and nations that have, have been the dominating forces in the area. And um, we have, um, this is my history professor side, is that um, those who know basic is that Riga is the capital, which is right there in the, the, the water that, that's named after the city. And your flag is crimson and white. And you have about two million, there are about two million people in the country. Estonia to the north, um, you have Lithuania to the south, uh, Russia to the east, Belarus, which became its own state, to the southeast, and then the Sweden's, the maritime waters to the west. So there, there's a lot of neighbors there to deal with. Um, can you please tell us about more about the Latvian people and their history? Absolutely, and it is an area where Latvians arrived four or 5,000 years ago in that area and settled. And there were various tribes of, of Latvian uh, peoples back at the time before we were called Latvians. Mm -hmm. uh, and there were Semigalians, there were Latgalians, there were Kursh, there were Libyish. There were a lot of different groups that uh, inhabited that area. And our language, along with the Lithuanian people, are the two Baltic languages. They're similar, not identical. Uh, you can understand each other, and some of the words are the same. Gotcha. Uh, but that, that is our closest neighbor, because we are not, our language is not, Estonian is more like Finnish. We're not a Slavic nation. We're not a Germanic nation. We're not a Scandinavian nation, either. Uh, we do live in a, in a neighborhood of empires, as you mentioned, and uh, over the centuries, uh, starting uh, back in the 1200s when the German Teutonic Knights arrived, uh, we've had various uh, empires rule us from 
the Polish-Lithuanian uh, Federation to uh, the Russian Empire to uh, the German to the Swedish. Of course, the most recent occupation by uh, Soviet Russia uh, that ended in 1990. Uh, so it is a tough neighborhood mm -hmm. to, to grow to, but you've to had grow two in. periods of independence. We have. We have. Between the wars after World War I, Latvia finally saw that opportunity to become its own nation. A very hard fought because as the war ended everywhere else, we still had both German and Russian troops in our country. Yeah. And we had to fight both armies to push them out of uh, Latvia. Uh, and they formed their own military after announcing, uh, you know, our proclamation of independence, November 18, 1918, and then our... Uh, you know, our military and our army veterans, many of which had served in other armies, mm -hmm. came together to uh, make Latvia a free country with the help of some of our neighbors as well. Okay. And, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's quite a story. And then, of course, we know about the, the Soviet occupation all of those years. And then um, please tell us about the next era, which is our era. And, you know, it was, uh, you know, we never thought it would come. Uh, we watched, of course, the Berlin Wall fall. We watched uh, the countries uh, uh, renouncing communism, renouncing uh, the Soviet system. Uh, so in May 4th, 1990, uh, the Latvian uh, Congress at the time uh, reclaimed or re uh, announced its restoration of Independence Day. It was May 4th, 1990. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there was a lot of turmoil at the time. Uh, the Soviet army was still there, uh, the ruble was there, the government was a communist government system, so there was a huge transition that had to happen during that mm -hmm. time period. Uh, the great thing is, with a lot of support uh, from the United States, from Latvians living here in the United States, uh, and other democratic countries, they were able to make that transition uh, very difficult. Uh, changing currencies, changing languages, because at the time, Russian was uh, the official language uh, in Latvia during the occupation. Mm -hmm. uh, all of that had to change, the institutions, uh, not to mention the country had been, uh, um, you know, suffered a lot during that time period. Sure. Uh, we had a very large Russian population uh, as a result of all the folks that, or people that were, or died in World War II mm -hmm. or were, were sent to concentration camps in Siberia or had to leave, like my parents and and grandparents did, uh, but they did it. Uh, they joined, uh, of course, the NATO. Uh, one of the reasons we're free today is because of NATO, because of the United States support. Mm -hmm. Very important. If not, uh, I'm sure uh, we would be occupied already. Uh, and, uh, you know, we really appreciate that support. We're also part of EU. That has been very important for us from an economic development mm -hmm. and standpoint. And, of course, we're talking a little bit about Latvia and Indiana. Those types of relationships are very important, and even getting even closer is the relationships between like Carmel and Yelgava. Yeah, uh, so oh, that's great. That's that's, uh, that's the amazing whole, part of this. Really, the the special sauce behind the the, the sister cities. Um, while we have a few moments in this chapter, could we could you tell us a little bit about um, some of you know the the, the culture? of the Latvians and like what are some foods that we might see at one of the festivals or what is some of the art and you told me about this your ring that's a national ring um, just a, a few cultural things that we can take away sure. that we can learn about the Latvians Latvians are very proud people like I said we've been there and a lot of people don't know we're one of the oldest languages in Europe mm -hmm. uh, and the people have very uh, long ingrained traditions, uh, a lot of it through song and verse and dance as opposed to a written history. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of these mm -hmm. was this ring, which is called the Names Ring. It's a Latvian national ring. I think we might be the only ones that have a national ring. Uh, but that was when uh, the Teutonic Knights from Germany came and they fought various wars against the tribes. And one of them, the tribe was led by a king named Names. Uh, Names knew he'd be away from his young son, so he gave his son a ring, like designed like this, woven in, and uh, of silver. And that way he would recognize his son when he returned. Mm -hmm. The Teutonic Knights figured this out. Of course, in those days, if you could get to the family 
of the king. You could control the king and everything else. And as Latvians learned that they were searching for him, all the Latvians started wearing Namais rings. So that's oh, a very interesting historical uh, fact. Uh, our flag, also one of the oldest in Europe, uh, mm -hmm. was uh, around centuries ago, uh, really uh, derived from a battle where they had placed a white sheet over a soldier that had died. Mm. And he bled out on both sides with a white stripe in the middle, mm. which gives us the crimson on both sides, on both sides uh, and the white in the middle. Uh, so uh, if we're talking about Latvia uh, itself, most famous uh, food is pidagi. It's a little different than the pierogi from the Polish. But is it spelled about the same? Well, tell, tell us about it. What, what it is. It? It's, it is spelled very similar. It's pirogi, P-I-R-A-G-I. And ours is made out of dough, and it has bacon and onions and ham inside. And usually when your grandmother made it, bacon wins. <laughs> I mean, it, you could sit there and eat 20 of them sure. coming right out of the oven. So nice. I would say that's kind of our national food. Uh, by all means, now we're very big also into uh, hockey, as you may know. I don't mm -hmm. know how many people realize, but Latvia beat the U.S. for the bronze at the World Hockey Championships in wow. uh, May of uh, this past year. I happen to be there with the Carmel delegation, so we got to celebrate with tens of thousands of Latvians at the Freedom Monument, the Freedom wow. Monument being the main monument to Latvia mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, built back in the, during the first uh, period of freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was an incredible thing. We're also know very well for bobsled champions and so forth and uh, big into sports. Uh, uh, Porzingis so some, is some medals Olympian. in the, the Winter Olympics <laughs> now, now that's separated from the Soviet Union. We hope to. We yeah. hope to. We have quite a few NBA players as well oh. playing. Uh, like I said, Porzingis is height, there. Right? It height. is. There's tall. It didn't make it to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up playing volleyball. But uh, still, that's, right. the, uh, it, it, that's a lot of the great things about the country. It's a beautiful country to visit it, the forests, the hills, uh, uh, we have uh, the Baltic Sea and the Riga Bay. Uh, it's, it's just so fantastic. The people are friendly. The food is amazing. And we just celebrated our 150 years song and dance festival last summer. Nice. We had <clears throat> some 17,000 uh, dancers, some 40,000 singers that came together uh, and celebrated that 150 year anniversary. Uh, so it's really about song. It's about dance. We still celebrate the summer solstice. It's called Yanya. Uh, it is one of the uh, big holidays in Latvia. Uh, it'll last for three days mm -hmm. uh, where you celebrate the longest day of the year. Yeah, after the long winter, you're going to be very happy <laughs> when that sun's coming out. Uh, you have to be. And, yeah. it, and, and it does only go down for a few hours yes. uh, when you're there. When you're uh, there. But it's all about friends and family and song and dance and history and the culture. Amazing time to visit if you get a chance. Nice. Well, we're going to take a break right now, and we'll be back for Chapter 2 of The Omnibus Show. Hello and welcome back to Chapter 2 of the Omnibus Show. Our guest today is Andres Berzins, who is the Honorary Counsel for the Republic of Latvia to the State of Indiana. He's also the President of the Carmel and Yelgava Sister Cities Committee and the City of Carmel Sister Cities and Community Outreach Consultant. And he has actually three cards, because it's too many things to put on one card. But anyway, well, welcome back. It, it's great having you here today. And thank you for teaching us about the Latvians. And um, bringing it home to Indiana, um, could you tell us about what, up now, because we want to be contemporary, with uh, Latvia, the relationship with Latvia and Indiana, and, um, you know, what, what is going on? What's, what's coming on? Tell us a little bit about Latvia and Indiana. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, of course, Latvia and Indiana, very similar uh, uh, state and country. Uh, agriculture has always been a big uh, uh, 
occupation and, and you know Latvia is an agricultural uh, country Indiana is as well so there's some of the similarities there's a big focus uh, in Latvia on technology as we are now mm-hmm. pharma and so forth so looking that's fairly at, new isn't that but it isn't is it phar- pharma pharmacology is is become a, a very new that's one of the newer um, industries in the country agreed agreed they had some uh, older uh, pharmaceutical companies, but they've been developing those and, and developing those on a national, of course, international basis in Europe. And, of course, Indiana with our great corporations here like Eli Lilly. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, I think there are, are many opportunities. We're also looking at opportunities, uh, you know, that, uh, with uh, Indiana University uh, and also uh, the Heron School of Art. We've had some discussions with oh, nice. uh, to uh, connect with the uh, Latvian uh, Art Institute, um, and we're also working uh, with the IU Health uh, with a program for specifically Yelgava Hospital doctors to come and visit. So we have a lot of... Uh, that would be a great exchange. Agreed. You know, learning back and forth on, on medical procedures and, and health processes. Well, and having one of the uh, great universities, medical universities, and break, great health systems with Indiana University, mm-hmm. it, it's a it's a definitely great connection. So we are in the process of maybe formalizing a vi- first visit here in May uh, nice. from Yelgava. To uh, two doctors will be coming over and spending time uh, with IU Health North. Uh, president there is Doug Puckett, and the other uh, hospitals around. So we're very excited about that, both from uh, physician standpoint and nursing standpoint and and what they can learn with the technology and the facilities that we have uh, and how our systems operate. I think there's a great exchange and a great opportunity to learn from one another. Well, that sounds like an excellent program. I just, anytime you can learn and expand your knowledge on the medical people, that gets good for everybody. (laughs) uh, We can always uh, get the benefits from expanded uh, health knowledge well that's great that's that's fabulous um and 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 also well with your sister with the Yelgava Carmel sister city committee please tell us about uh, what what is uh what's coming up what is in the new year what what are you up to this year yep <laughs> and also a lot of great things uh planned in addition to uh the the doctors uh, we are continuing and hoping to continue our police exchange program, having the police officers spend that time and learn from each other. Uh, I can tell you last year uh, that was a big uh, uh, event. Uh, the Latvian uh, officers learned a lot about policing in the United States, the latest policing techniques, uh, and uh, I love the fact that we sent uh, two of our officers there uh, who also had a chance to interact with the community and they could see how American uh, and Carmel police officers act and engage with the public. I think that's huge. Uh, we hope to have, of course, artists coming again. Nice. Uh, that will be a big part of it uh, in, uh, in part of the Carmel International Arts Festival. And again, mm-hmm. I, I just want to thank uh, uh, Meg Osborne and uh, the entire board for their focus on cultural diversity and sister cities and finding a home for us. Mm-hmm. Um, before, we were at the farmer's market once a month, but we've now managed to be uh, be invited and be part of this. It's very exciting. Not only will we have our artists there, we will also have uh, our cultural booths for the sister cities and performers. So that's going to be a great experience. Nice. We have a dance group that we hope to bring over, one of the main dance groups in Yelgava, Lealupa, to perform here as well. Uh, that'll be in the fall. Uh, we also have some library books that will be coming over from the Elgava Library, mm-hmm. donated to Carmel. And we are also, uh, nice. Carmel Library is donating books to the uh, Yelgava Library. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have that exchange as well, which I, I think it's great when it involves education, art, music, dance. I mean, those are, those are wonderful opportunities. So those are some of the ones we're working on currently. Yeah, that's really interesting. You know, um, with sister cities, is that is there going to be any now? The um, I believe there's the Chinese, is the Japanese garden, right? Yes, it's, that's the behind the city hall. W- will there be any kind of permanent? Um, um, what's the word? Like a garden or a painting or something permanent 
in Carmel from Yelgaba, from Latvia. You know, we're hoping to. Uh, that is a beautiful, the Japanese garden for our Kuachinagino uh, sister city. That's our oldest, by the way. It goes back to 94, so 30 yeah. years. They're celebrating a 30-year anniversary. So you can maybe expect some good things from uh, our sister city, uh, perhaps a festival, perhaps some nice. uh, a delegation. Uh, so we're hoping for that. Um, we are hoping to do something sister city-oriented uh, for all the sister cities in Carmel mm -hmm. uh, to introduce the citizens of Carmel to the sister cities and who those people are. I mean, people don't realize, you know, you're, you're talking about your neighbors, sure. your friends, your kids go to school, the teachers, uh, the everybody. Uh, they're part of these communities and just mm -hmm. to learn more. So we're trying to find an, uh, and identify a place where we can perhaps share that with a greater amount of people in Carmel to learn about all these different sister cities. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fascinating. Thank you so much. And, um, does that cover everything for, for 2024? 2024, there could be many other things. I'll, I'll tell you, all the sister cities have uh, uh, some amazing programs uh, going and have had in the past. Um, I'm really grateful to Mayor Finkum and uh, the new uh, community uh, marketing, community relations director, Rebecca Carl. They are very supportive of the sister city program, very supportive mm -hmm. uh, of all the cultural diversity we have. Interestingly, there's 87 different uh, nationalities living in Carmel, speaking 105 different languages. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are very diverse, and there's a lot of communities that, again, you may not realize it, but there may be a neighbor or your kids go to school. So I love the fact that we're continuing that focus on the international community, the diversity in a way for us all to engage each other. But I think you're going to see a lot of different things coming. Keep your eyes open from the various sister cities we have. There's Zhongyang, China, Vishakhapatnam, India, Cortona, Italy, Raoul Malmaison, France. Uh, we have also um, Zeifen, Germany. Of course, Yelgava, uh, Kawacha Nagano, Japan. I think that's seven. Uh, so uh, that's uh, very exciting. We just met and we have some exciting community related events we hope to host this year as well. So uh, I think it's going to be a great year this year. But to, to pass the door, you have to say them all 10 times in a row. Right? <laughs> That's, uh, no, this is, this is great, some great names and it sounds like some um, great things ahead. Well, thank you for being with us today, Andres. Um, we look forward to hearing some good things um, coming from the Latvian community here in Carmel and in Indiana. And uh, best wishes on uh, this new year and this new season. And thank you. It's great having you here with us today. Thanks for having us. Well, thank, thank you, you Andres. Well, that's it for today's episode of The Omnibus Show. We'd like to thank our guest, Andres Berzins, being with us today. We'd also like to thank our sponsor, Hotel Carmichael. Today we're at Feinstein's. And we look forward to being with you on the next episode of The Omnibus Show. If you enjoyed this program, please like, share and subscribe to continue the conversation. For The Omnibus Show newsletter, please sign up at theomnibusshow.com.